Wednesdays are so exciting because Wednesdays tend to be an express entry draw day. And as normal, we expect so many dreams to get fulfilled because of these express entry draws. as well. Another express entry draw did happen today, thankfully. Uh, though I was a little bit skeptical this morning, maybe, maybe not kind of a thing. But as the day progressed, I was quite hopeful that it would happen. Thankfully, the draw did happen today. Draw number 246, I think. Oh, did I get that right or wrong? Yeah. And uh, the CRS score, uh, that's where it got a bit tricky. It went up. The CRS score went up to 486. Uh, this was higher than the last draw, which happened two weeks back, which was at 481. This was primarily because the number of invitations that were issued in this particular draw was only 3,500, half than what we had gotten used to seeing over the last three draws. But let's talk more about this in detail. Welcome to the channel. My name is Kuber. I'm a CICC licensed immigration consultant. I talk more about Canadian immigration uh, updates processes. So yeah, this is the channel you want to be in. If at all, Canadian immigration is what you look to do. So talking about this latest express entry draw, uh, let's, let's get to the figures first. This was draw number 246, today being the 12th of April, 10th draw of 2023, 3,500 invitations issued, 486 was the lowest CRS score for this particular draw. This was an all program draw. All program draw basically means all programs, Canadian experience class, federal skilled workers, federal skilled trade categories, and all PNPs who have received 600 points or more, uh, 600 points in their application would have been included in this draw. The tiebreaker for this particular draw was 19th of July at 11.05.24 UTC. Now, what this basically means is only those people whose score is 486, only those people, they were impacted by the tiebreaker, which basically means if you created your profile after the 19th of July, then you were not included in this particular draw. 19th of July, hmm, which basically means quite a lot of 486s have also not been cleared in this draw. But let's talk more about that in a bit. This is the official uh, publication of the draw as per the ministerial instructions. Uh, everything same there. As I said, all program draws. This was an all program draw. Now, CRS score distribution. The pool breakdown is where it gets very, very interesting because... You know, each each week, rather each draw week, when whenever the draw happens, we discuss about the pool breakdown and how things get very tricky there. Now, in this particular draw, what has happened is, and one of the big reasons why the score instead of dropping has actually gone up. And if you remember, we have spoken about this previously as well, that whenever they have they have had a back to back draw or a triple back to back draw, depending on how many people have gotten back into the pool, the scores have fluctuated. This time, it's gone up. And it's gone up significantly. Now, why is it significant? Is because even this five-point increase from 481 to 486, just a five-point increase, but it's a lot. It's a big increase, uh, specifically under the fact of, I mean, from, from a very long time, we were hoping that the scores would come down, right? And it did come down to 481. What has happened here is the number of PNP applications or the number of people who have nominations has not really gone up a lot. It's only 501, to be very honest, which is a very small number, uh, given the circumstances of how many people have been issued uh, notifications of interest, how many people have been getting invitations from different provinces. 501 is, is a very small number. We have to be thankful for that. 501 to 600, the high scorers, usually people who have uh, bilingual scores who have basically French as well as the English language scores or who have Canadian masters, who have Canadian uh, work experience, who probably have a job offer 50 points. Those are the ones who would usually sit between 501 and 600. And that's only 1180 in, in a span of two weeks. So again, not a very big number. The numbers where it actually jumped up and that is where the shocking one was 491 to 500 went up by 1,284 which under normal circumstances is only between 400 to 600. So there was a big, big number increase by 600 there. And 481 to 490, this was a whammy. 2,871, that was the number of people who got added into the pool there. And not exactly 2871 because there was a leftover from the last draw of about 962 profiles. Those were the number of people who did not get the, the 
invitation in the last row at 481 because of the tiebreaker. But in spite of that, almost 2,000 people got added with a score of 481 and above in, in that range. Now, under normal circumstances, it's not a lot. But given the situation here, it's it's a lot. Because the total of all of this, the 2871, the 1284, the 1180 and the 501, everybody over 481, the total is now 5,836. If you remove the 962 profiles who were invited or who did not get the invitation in the last draw sitting at 481, it basically means in spite of the fact that the pool had been completely cleared out with 482 and above, or rather some of 481s as one at the last draw, still this time 4,874 people came back into the pool with such high scores of 481 and above. So that's pretty big, big, big numbers there. And with these big numbers, this is the reason why the scores have actually jumped up. Why? Because we were always thinking, hey, 7,000 invitations, 7,000 invitations. We got three draws of 7,000 invitations. What that did is, in, in, in the hindsight, the, the good thing is that had they not conducted the 7,000 per draw kind of invitation, had they not done that, the scores wouldn't have dropped to 481. It was not going to happen. You know, the numbers were not in that favor. By conducting those draws of 7,000, 7,000, 7,000, three draws over two weeks, what they did is that they actually did bring it to 481. But again, this time, now that they have come back to their normal draws, normal draw sizes, I've been saying this for a very long time. If you're watching my videos, then you already know that 3,500 is something which we have been predicting for quite some time, that this is the average draw size that they would come back to. And this is what they have come back to, 3,500 exact. So all this time that we were seeing 7,000, 7,000, 7,000, they were actually doing double draws at the same time. So not only did we have three back-to-back -back draws, we actually had six if you actually calculate 3,500 as the draws. Effectively, that did bring the scores down to 481. But now that they have come back to the regular draw size of only 3,500, the scores have gone up, which, uh, which, is, which is quite understandable. I mean, there was no way they could have continued with the 7,000 charade. Now, comparatively, the last draw, this is the last pool breakdown. You can see 601 to 1,200, there was an increase of only 261, but that is because it was only a one-week gap before the previous draw. 501 to 600, there was only 468. As I said, there was a gap of only one week, so that was the number. You see 491 to 500, only 374. If you say even one-week gap, if this was two weeks, let's say 600, 700 people. But that's not the case here. What has happened is we have gone up to 1200 so double the number that would have been normal and 481 to 490 we didn't really get the we didn't really see what was the difference there but it wasn't much and again uh, if you see the pool breakdown for this week 2871 big number there in the 481 to 490 range now what is it looking like as of the 12th of april which is today Draw on draw number increase in 491 plus profiles is 2,965. Uh, of course, the bigger chunk was at 481 to 490. So 2,965, we, we always look at 491 is because where the majority of uh, uh, bilingual French speakers, uh, people with job offers, those people who come in, right? So this, this number gets very tricky there. The number of profiles that are remaining in the express entry pool with 481 plus range, 2,336. That is the number of people who are still in the express entry pool with scores of more than 481. Again, big number. Now, this brings us to the question, what is going to be the next draw looking like? Now, there are a bit of, a, uh, there are a bit of speculations and we will talk about the speculations in a bit. But if they continue with the regular draw consistently, and this is where we are coming to add, so which basically means bi-weekly. So if the draw has happened today, which is the 12th of April, the next draw would be on the 26th of April. That is what is expected. And if there is a draw on the 26th of April and they continue with the 3500 ITAs, I am quite skeptical that the scores might yet go up again or might stay at the same score. I'm thinking between 485 and 488. Even 485, I'm a bit skeptical. And the reason is, again, very simple. If they are going to invite only 3,500 people, there are already 2,336 people in the pool. And if each two weeks you have an increase in the number of profiles in the pool, this time 2,965 people get got added into the pool with score of 491 plus. 
let's say if a similar number gets added into the pool uh, in two weeks time and if they issue only 3500 invitations scores are going to be pretty much 486 487 485 kind of range pretty pretty high on that side i don't see it dropping i see it remaining consistent at the same number maybe a point or two higher even that is a possibility now when will the scores drop below 418 this is completely completely uh, foxing me right now i mean i can't even think of what exactly to, to, to say to anybody who's at score 480 below even in 480s low 480s this is suddenly the whole game is now turning topsy-turvy everything is back you know going round and round on their heads because there is no clear way of understanding which way this is going yes the threat of bill c19 is looming of course we always know that that is going to happen at some point of time we are already in the month of april uh, sean fraser said later this year we do not know when the later would be whether it would be june july august september we do not know when until that time we are hoping that the express entry draws will continue and if they will continue but if they continue in this fashion in this format then uh, it's 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 looking quite difficult now this is this is where it gets a bit more tricky but let's let's talk about other numbers as well at the same time the number of invitations that have already been issued in 2023 at this point of time are 41059 which in my opinion is more than half of what the quota for this year i anticipate which is at 80000 for this year the candidates in express entry pool actually has dropped last two weeks two weeks back the number of people in the pool were 234000 this time it's 231119 which basically means that the net net difference is quite a few people have either their profiles have expired and they haven't created one or they have just withdrawn their profiles or probably waiting for something else but i'm not sure but there is a net net difference of approximately three and a half thousand people in the pool quotas for 2023 again to remind you 82,880 people from uh, federal high skill and about 35,000 from the pnps the remaining number of draws this year approximately 16 more remaining to go and the bill c19 implementation is sometimes later this year and this is where he says it but when it comes to permanent residency we've developed some new tools that are going to help better spread out people across canada we've had the largest increase in the numbers of people who will come through the provincial nominee program in the history of the uh, annual immigration levels plan just this past year in addition, we're increasing the numbers through regional programs like the Rural and Northern Program or the Atlantic Immigration Program. And we've developed a new selection tool through the Federal Express Entry System last year that will take effect in the second half of this year. This is going to allow us to select workers, not just based on the highest score, but based on the sector that they plan to work in and the region of Canada that they're going to. So if we come... So that's what it says. Second half of this year is when the new selection tool, which we are talking about, and that is your Bill C-19. That's when it comes into play. <sighs> Few speculations. Now, because we had come to, we had we we almost gotten used to the 7,000 draw you know, size because it was so nice to see 7,000 invitations being issued, so many people getting. But you know, what has happened is over, over the last, Two weeks i've done several consultations of course and at least three people i remember distinctively whose scores were 482 483 those kind of scores and they were looking to decline their ITAs because they were told by some other consultant some other lawyer that they need to decline their ita because of small errors or small changes they wanted to create in their express entry profile guys i'm telling you now again do not decline your ita unless and until there has been a critical mistake that you have made in your express entry profile if you have received your points before you have completed your work experience it's not your fault it's the system the way, cal way it calculates in most cases if you have not completed one year of work experience you get work experience points in the 11th month it's fine you haven't committed misrepresentation you did not declare wrong work experience the system gives it to you because the way system is designed if you have completed if you have gotten points for two years of work experience one a month or two months in advance please do not decline your ita continue with your ita but submit your application only and only after you complete your valid period of work for which you are claiming points this is one of the biggest reasons that people refuse or decline their ITAs. please don't do it 
a lot of people who are back into the pool now are the ones who have declined their ITAs for one or the other reason. Two, there are some people out there who have declined their ITAs expecting that they would get it again. And now they are the ones who will be very, very upset because the scores have gone up. Because IRCC is so inconsistent, because there is so much of uncertainty around express entry, declining your ITA would be the biggest mistake you would make in, in, in the entire journey with express entry. So please don't do that. Think 20 times, 30 times, 50 times. Speak to 200 people if you have to. But before you make that mistake of, of declining your ITA, please be absolutely sure that there is no other way out than to decline your ITA. There are very, very few instances for which you might have to decline your ITA. Okay. Uh, I, honestly, I can't think of one. For example, your passport has expired and you will not get a renewed passport before, before the time you submit your application. A passport is a mandatory document. Uh, even if, if you submit a, an expired passport with an explanation that you will provide it later on, in most cases, IRCC will refuse or reject that application in the R10 stage because a valid passport is a mandatory document. Okay, uh, Situations like those. What else can I think of? You have made a, a, a mistake by claiming wrong points, which you did not receive, which you shouldn't have gotten in the first place. Means you made a mistake. You made an entry, which you shouldn't have made to claim work experience, which you shouldn't have got. If that is the if that is the situation, then you obviously will be refused your application, so you can decline your ITA. But in most other cases, in most other situations, you shouldn't have had to decline your ITA. There is you can explain in most cases, uh, or in some cases, there is no reason to explain either. You can just make that small minor changes. Sometimes your work experience dates are varying by a month here and there. Sometimes your education details are varying by month here and there. The names are different. Sometimes you haven't indicated something very, very minor. Or so. There are so many different backgrounds, so many different situations. But in most cases, you may not need to de de decline your ITA. So please, please do not do that. Not only are you making it, you know, quite, quite grave for yourself. Uh, you are also, you know, taking away a slot of somebody else. So yeah, that's, that's what I would like to say. Talking about speculations, a lot of people are expecting and hoping for a CEC specific draw. And they're saying that because it's a 3,500 invitations today, maybe they will issue a draw for 3,500 tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I'm not sure why you are thinking IRCC is obligated to do, do another 3,500 draw. Well, if it happens, excellent. Voila. I mean, we'll be doing another video. We'll be celebrating that if that happens because IRCC is so uh, unpredictable, right? But the Bill C-19 draws which will happen are primarily meant to give advantage to inside Canada factors. Okay, That is the fundamental uh, premises of, on, on which Bill C-19 is made. And also the draws that are happening have been happening. Majority of the draws have been happening are primarily CEC specific, you, if you, whether, you want to, whether you like it or not. I mean, you might not like it because you are thinking that if CEC draws are to happen, the scores will plummet down to 300s. It will not happen. Those were different times. The background was different. The circumstances were different. There was a draw of 27,000 people which cleared the entire express entry pool of all CEC candidates. That's why the score could afford to be remain down as they continue with the CEC specific draw. At this point of time, even if they do a CEC specific specific draw, the scores are not really going to drop because majority of the people who are getting invitation, majority of them are CEC specific. We, we did a, a small data. I'm not sure if I have it right now here with me. Uh, in, in the year 2022, <clears throat> About 37,000 invitations were, were given out. Out of 37,000 uh, and of the express entry draws, the regular draws that happened, and once the PNP draws were not being conducted, out of the 17,000 total invitations issued to the non-PNP uh, candidates, 12,000 went to Canadian experience class and about 5,000 went to you know people who were bilingual, people who had job offers, and people who were federal skill class, right? Uh, federal skill worker class. So. 12,000 were still Canadian experience class. So even now, if they have to conduct a draw for Canadian experience class, you will realize that the, the scores are not going to drop a lot. It might, of course, it will drop because it makes a bit of a difference. You're going to remove the bilingual candidates out. You're going to remove the federal skill worker candidates out or people who have job offers. You're going to remove those out. But by and large, the difference is not going to be huge. At this point of time, another thing that has been looming and that has been creating a lot of, uh, you know, that's been giving people a lot of nerves is uh, the IRCC strike. 
Now, the IRCC strike is expected to start as early as Monday next week. We do not know exactly when, but there is a lot of speculation. There is a lot of rumors that it may start by next week. Now, if that is to happen, a lot of impact is going to happen within CBSA, within IRB, Immigration, Refu uh, uh, Immigration Refugee Board, and within IRCC. All these three departments, amongst a lot of other federal government departments, are going to get impacted and affected. I don't think the draws will particularly be impacted because it doesn't need people to you know, <laughs> come and conduct the draws. Uh, so yeah, I don't expect the draws to be impacted. IRCC has said the online services will not be impacted, which basically means you can continue submitting your applications. Those are not impacted. What will be impacted will be the counselor services, which basically means IRCC has counselors. I mean, IRCC has offices in the counselors across the world. So IRCC performing those functions, the processing will be impacted. The visa stampings will be impacted. Uh, any paper applications that you submit. So paper applications can be sent, but the processing of those paper applications will be impacted. Uh, In-person appointments, if any, uh, if you have any, any in-person in interviews or appointments, those processing times will get impacted. Uh, Canadian passport applications will get impacted. Canadian citizenship ceremonies and oaths those will get impacted. And as I said, processing times across the board, all application types processings will get impacted. Until how long will the strike continue? I don't know because it hasn't even started yet. It is just at this point of time anticipated that it might start next week. Uh, if that happens, as I said, the draws are not going to get, in my opinion, I don't think the draws will get impacted, but we have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, usually, these kind of strikes do not happen. If this one happens, this is going to be pretty big uh, from what I understand. More than 159,000 uh, federal services employees are affected. And uh, we'll have to just wait and see how, how, this get, how this plays on. And of course, I mean, as usual, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated as and how I learn about things. I'm going to take a few questions because, guys, please do not take super chats at this point of time. We will not be able to take too many questions, but very quickly to clear these out. Uh, Day Gamer says, I got my PR application wrongly rejected due to PCC. IRCC says that my stay was five days more than what is stated on my PCC. This is wrong. I actually left on the date stated on PCC. What can I do? Appeal. Well, first of all, express entry applications do not have appeal process. If you feel IRCC did indeed make a mistake, uh, then you can request for reconsideration by explaining where IRCC has made a mistake. Uh, reconsiderations are expected if there is error in fact, error in law, and if procedural fairness was not followed. For these three reasons, reconsideration requests are accepted. In your case, if uh, there was a judgment error made in fact, and this being that you did, uh, I mean, your PCC was issued you know what you you said you have you left the day the PCC was issued. Now that is always a very close line. Did you depart early in the morning and then the PCC was issued, PCC was issued later this date? So that the date of issue and the date of departure that can always always be a very conflicting information. But there is no harm. Two things you can do. First of all, right away create another express entry profile so that you can get take advantage of the next draw whenever that happens. So if, if you are to get invited, you'll get invited. Meanwhile, raise a request for reconsideration, send it out, explain your situation, explain in details, giving what date you left, what date you were not in the country, what time the PCC was issued, and that it covers the entire duration of stay. The most important factor is it should cover the entire duration of your stay in that country. If it covers the entire duration of stay, you're good. If it doesn't cover the entire duration of stay, then uh, I'm, af I'm afraid IRCC would be right. But as I said, you can raise a reconsideration request by citing error in the fact, and hopefully your application gets processed. In the meantime, create a another express entry profile so that you can get advantage of the next draw when that happens, just in case IRCC does not accept your uh, request for reconsideration. Uh, that is what you can do. Dikshit, no question here. Karthik. I am in ICT without family score 487 and got an ITA. Family is with me on spouse open work permit. Is it possible to add them after I become citizen? With family score is 475. Can they continue on spouse open work permit until I become citizen? 
your thoughts, please. You, you know how long it's going to take for you to become citizen, right? Three years after you become a permanent resident. So I think what you're trying to ask me is, can you sponsor them after you become a permanent resident? Then the answer is yes. Uh, if your family is in Canada on an open work permit, there is no problem. They can continue to be on an open work permit. There is no issue with that. You can continue with your application as spouse, not accompanying. That's what you're trying to do here. Once your application is approved, once you become a permanent resident, then you can go ahead and apply for spousal sponsorship to you know, get your PR, your, your spouse to become a PR in Canada. So there is no problem with that. They can continue with the uh, open work permit in the meantime. If employment reference letter from HR says that employment will continue to be employee, employee will be continue to be employed after one year after PR, then is it good, good enough to claim 50 points for the job of a letter? Uh, this is absolutely fine. You can claim job, um, you can claim 50 points for job offer if your current work permit is a closed work permit, closed on the employer who is issuing you this letter, and you have completed one year of work experience with this employer. Uh, also, alternatively, is if you have an LMIA and you have this letter which says this job offer is valid for one year after you become a PR, then you can claim those 50 points as well. Uh, that's pretty much all that I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, this was another express entry draw, which basically uh, I hope it continues. I hope they stay with the consistency of the draws. And if they do that, then hopefully at some point of time, we can also start seeing scores going below. Uh, until such time, as long as they maintain a 3,500 kind of an uh, ITAs per draw, it's it's going to be a bit difficult moving ahead. Uh, but let's see how IRCC is playing it out because IRCC is unpredictable. Who would have thought they would have issued 21,000 ITAs in three draws in two weeks and now they are sitting with 3,500. So you never know, there might be another big one coming across the corner. Let's stay forever hopeful and I'll keep you updated as and when we find out something more and uh, at such point of time do to do tune in uh, for now i am tuning out good night stay safe take care